before we get started, I'd really appreciate if you are uh, enjoying the video so far, if you'd hit that like button. Uh, it helps to motivate me and uh, encourage me to get up and make these uh, make these videos and keep doing them. Uh, so where do we begin? We start with KK, and uh, we'll go through the first movement that he plays nice and slowly here, just so we can remind ourselves what's going on. So it's something like this. What is that? But at the beginning of the um, movement, he's playing the same three notes, but on three different strings, three different frets. It's five on the E, ten on the B, and then fourteen on the G. And the fourteen is actually that the point of the guitar where we're going to pivot all of the rest of the movement. So, first thing we're doing is sliding up to that five, then doing it again on the ten with our next finger, ten on the B, before finally fourteen on the G. So we've got one, two, three. From that position on the 14, we're going to line up with the ring finger on the 17 and the middle finger on the 16. And we're going to play this little movement using artificial on the 17, going 14, 16, 17. Back down to 14. So it's 14, 16, 17, 16, 14. Before finally repositioning 14, 12, ring and index, doing a pull off, and then finally artificial 14 with vibrato at the end. So that movement is. Just again from the beginning, from the first three, we've got. as much vibrato as you can at each point, and then we're going to be artificial on the 17. Okay. Again, moving back to 14 with our index finger, lining up 17 and 16 as before, we're going to start with 17, and we are executing a series of quite speedy semi-quavers. Okay. But there's no weird pattern in this one, unlike what uh, Glenn and KK usually do, uh, where they insert um, interesting rhythm, rhythmic patterns. This is just a series of very, very fast, alternating picking uh, semiquavers. 17, 14, then it's going to be 16, followed by 17, followed by 19 on this pattern, as we can see here. Okay, so that's 17, three 14s, 16, three 14s. 17, 3 14s, 19 with the pinky, 3 14s. And we just, once you finish those four, um, four sets of four, we just do that exact pattern again. So it's, you just do the whole thing twice over. From that point, you've just done an upstroke on the 14. You're going to gently touch 17 on the top string with your ring finger, and it's very easy to make noise here, so you're just going to gently palm mute that, and then you're going to run up 14, 15, 17 on the A. One, two, three, four. 17, 14, 15, 17. Before finally sliding 12 to 14 on the G. And then the last note of the movement is the artificial vibrato on that 14. Okay. So let's just go again from the semi quavers. 17. Twice over. Once more through the whole movement, nice and slowly. Okay. 
That's the end of KK's first movement. Uh, Glenn now takes over. Okay, let's just have a quick look at Glenn's part, uh, Glenn's first part here, played very slowly, just to remind ourselves of what it looks like. So typical Glenn, we're going all over the neck in uh, one movement, um, but this one isn't as um, as grueling as some of his other some of his other movements that do that. So uh, what we're doing is we're starting down here on three o o o two o o o on the A string, and when you can notice what he's doing is he's kind of mimicking KK's movement that he finished his his first part with, which was it. Glenn's doing it down here except he's being very cheeky and he's doing it faster. He's cramming, it's not just semi-quavers, he's actually cramming them in uh, to a, a faster tempo. I don't think it's quite demi-quavers, it's not that fast, but it's probably 20-30% faster than what KK's doing. He's By the time he finishes, he's out of time, but what he does is he slides up to D on the 7 on the D uh, and waits for the music to catch up with him, so you'll, you will have heard that in the solo. So while we're practicing, all we're doing is just getting used to that nice up-down motion, down-up, should I say, in this case. Down on the three, it's three o o o two o o o three o o o two o o o. So when you start to practice and start to build it up uh, to a faster speed, the idea is to basically tremolo this movement, and then whenever you finish that. That. Slide up to that seven on the D to, to allow that to, to allow the beat to catch up. Uh, we then have uh, we then lift essentially, and we're up to seventeen and fifteen on the bottom string. We're then bending fifteen back up to seventeen, bending and releasing, and then it's do 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 do, which is twelve, fifteen, twelve, seventeen, twelve. Let's have another look. So from that 13, we then slide that away. From that 13, we're going to slide that away before coming back up to hammer a 12-15 on the E. This next movement is kind of bluesy and slow, and it took me quite a long time to decode uh, what actually I, I think Glenn's doing, which is coming sliding away that beat, and then off the beat it's 12-15-12. Again, slide away, take a break, come back to 17 on the E, and that's hammering onto 20 three times, so the six notes... Again, just from the 13 sliding away. Okay. Uh, once you've gone, we're going to voice two 22s on the bottom string. 2017. Two 20s. 17. 20 on the B. And then. That's 17, 20 on the E. 17, 20 on the B, 17 E, 20 B, before finally landing on 17 on the B. So that's... Again. Two 22s. Two 20s. And then... That's hammered. Again, from that sliding part of the B, so...
Again, we slide that away. And then we allow ourselves to come back up to the same note again. Back to 17 on the B, so it's... And then it's another hammering onto the 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And now it's, this is the really funky part where he's like... He hammers 20 to 22 on the B. Back down to 20. 17. And then... That is uh, 20 on the G, 19 on the G, 17 on the G. And what's really interesting about this movement for Glenn is that it's... He, he doesn't resolve. He doesn't go where the ear wants to go, which is finally... Sorry, there. Back to 14 on the G. He lets KK take, take, take over at that point. So it's kind of like he's cascading down into the next movement. Uh, rather than actually just resolving on a big note or a big bend or anything like that. So let's just have another look at that part from... One, two, three. One, two, one, two, one, two. And then... Okay, let's do Glenn's entire second movement again, really, really slowly, so just you guys can hopefully get it all together in your head in terms of the rhythm. So we have the crazy, not quite demi quavers thing at the beginning. Seventeen fifteen. That, guy, that is uh, straightforward and uh, you can see the notes and you can start to feel the rhythm of, of the sliding away, the missed notes where he's just basically taking a break, sliding the hand down and back up again. Um, and you, you, you'll start to get a feel for it once you know actually where to put your fingers. Okay, so where are we up to? Uh, we've done KK's first movement, Glenn's first movement. So after Glenn has finished his... KK, KK takes over on the top string... Index on the 12, and we're at 17, 15. Some people prefer to use their pinky here and any combination of fingers. For me, um, my technique uh, is such that I find myself wanting to use my ring finger on 17, 15 on the middle finger, and 12 on the index. So this, this movement goes like this. Um, part of it anyway. Let's have another look. So we start on the 12, hammering 17 and 15, pu so pulling off 17 and 15 back to 12. So it's ba -ba -da -da, and then bending up to the 17 on the 15. Plenty of time to shake it. We then reset back in the same position and go 17. So that's just playing those three notes, 17, 15, 12, twice over, but with a dee diddle dee diddle We now bend 15 to 17 on the B, which is what gives the movement so much colour. Before voicing 12 again on the E, so that's... You see what I'm doing? Bending 15 up to 17 and then voicing 12 on the bottom. Hopefully without making too much noise. And then we replace that with 16 on the B with our ring finger. 17 with our pinky. Back to 16. 15. And then 13 on the B. Play it twice. Let's have another look. Uh, so it's two thirteens and then fifteen. Two fifteens. Before finally reposition yourself with your first finger on seventeen of the B of the E. So it's slight reprieve from the usual 
chaos of what's going on. Let's go again from, I don't want to get too far ahead, let's, let's go back to the beginning of KK's movement, which is... Let's hear it again. Next part is... Which is 20, 19, and 17 on the top two strings, on the bottom two strings. Voice 20 on the B. And then bend it 20 on the B. So pull off. Hopefully you can hear what that is. So 17, 20, 19, 17. 20 on the B. 17 again on the E. Bend that 20 on the B. And then just repeat it. Unfortunately, at speed, at the full 175 beats per minute, um, it's blindingly fast. And when I listen to the CD, actually, I'm, I'm almost wondering if not all three of those are actually there. Um, they, they probably are supposed to be. I don't know for sure. But um, so, again, just up to that. Let's get there from the beginning of KK's movement. So we've got... We then interrupt ourselves and we snap down to 3-2-0 oh on the A string for the next part of KK's second movement. Okay, so I think it's probably better if we play this through really, really slowly uh, at the beginning just to get a sense again of what this part is. We've got this lovely, very, very fast, muddy part at the bottom of the neck, rising all the way up to eventually end in... Okay. So let's begin. Uh, we're in semi-quaver land here, and it's 3 2 oh. Let's have a look. I actually kind of forgot halfway through what I was doing, um, <laughs> but don't worry, I'll, I'll tidy it up by the time we get to the uh, to the section. Um, so three, two, oh, what is this pattern? So we've got which is three, two, oh, oh, two, three. Slowly. Three, two, bum, bum, two, three, two, bum, three, two, bum, bum, two, three. And now we're going to voice O on the D and hammer. We then move up to uh, the G string. We start leading off with the fifth fret on the G string, pulling off. So that's 5, 4, 7, 5 on the D, back to 7 on the D, 4 on the G. Pause for a second and then go play the 4 again. 5, 7, 5 on the B, back to 7 on the G. Hold that for two, for two, the space of two notes. So let's hear that again. Sounds a bit strange because we've just been doing this kind of semi-quaver land where everything's just really, really fast and almost at the, at the limit uh, of what you can accomplish. Um, and I think this is why the run, by the time we end up going, 
by the time we do that, it sounds so sweet because the run-up is actually peppered with these other interesting uh, rhythmic pieces. Uh, it's not just all straight. It's... So when you slow it down, it actually sounds ple pleasing to the ear, even when it's not at, at blinding speed. Um, so we've done the first muddy part, we've done the second part in the middle of the neck. We're going to go to the last part, which we snap our hand to uh, the 10 on the B with our index finger. Uh, and we're going to be going uh, for... 13 to 12, pulling that off down to 10, 13, 12, 10. We're then going to go 14, just pulling straight to the 10, hopefully artificially striking the string as you do that. If you can, if you miss it, it still sounds amazing anyway. We're then going to go 15, 13, 12 again. Before then, 17, 15, 13. So there's one, two, three, four. Bella, 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 bella. Let's hear it again. Now, the next part is um, we play another um, set of four bars or, or, or set of four sequences with the same amount of spacing the same amount of time but we don't just play uh, the we don't just keep doing that we don't just keep going it's KK so things are things are substantially different to that by the time we get to uh, the end you'll notice that these first parts are actually uh, semi quavers but with a rest. There's actually a rest in there, so it's ba da da ba da da ba da da ba da da. They're not triplets. It's not going da 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 da. It's okay. The the fifth movement is uh, straight semiquavers with no rest, which is dee 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 dee. That's on the sixth as well. So that's seventeen, fifteen, thirteen, and then sixteen on the G. Sixth movement is. 15, 13, 16, 14 on the G. So the fifth is from the 17, pulling off to 13. 15, 13. That's the sixth. The seventh is 17, 15, 13. As a triplet. Okay, so this is not a three semiquavers with the rest. This is ba da da followed by 14, 12 on the E, again a triplet, and then we finally get to get to the 15. And you're, you're, you're not plucking the 15 cleanly, you're actually plucking the 14 and quickly snapping your finger down. A clever movement, like, we're just moving up the scale in sets of three notes, but the, 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 the colour of the timing in it makes it sound just so, so nice coupled with the, the earlier movement um, starting down here at the bottom of the neck. So let's have another quick look at this section before we then try and wrap the entire movement together. Again, we've got eight pieces. Here, let's hear them very, very slowly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 14, 12, 14. And then... This makes you feel like life is worth living. The guitar is worth playing. You know, there are... There's some things that just, you know, just... Just really good. I'll be on it. Really, really, really great fun to play. And, um, yeah, awesome, awesome sequence. Let's have another quick look. Second part of KK's second movie.
And what happens uh, in the um, in the recording is that because that's the end of KK's uh, movement, we're ready to begin the next part, which is actually both guitarists playing together. Um, so I think in the video I was pretending to be Glenn just so that I, I, I was I was voicing that different voice. Um, but both guitarists are playing. I've mapped out what I think is the main guitar or the melody tune of, of this next movement. And it actually comes over the top of KK's last note. So you're going... On that, on that note, that's actually the same place as the, the next movement begins, which is... So if you're playing it all at once, um, as you normally would be, um, allow yourself, let yourself play that 15. You probably want to just come in somewhere on that movement, so you're not going... You're probably just going... Okay, so let's now talk about this, uh, I guess we'll call it the second Glenn section, even though it's a, um, uh, it's, it's performed by both. Um, this one uh, features this really lovely slow piece at the top of, uh, top of the guitar here. For the second, we we'll, we'll learn that piece in one part, and then the second part of this movement goes like this. Finally, the third part of the movement. Okay, so that's all we're going to learn for this for this section. So the, there are three parts to to this uh, to this um, fourth part of the of the solo. Right, so the nice slow part at the top, what is that? Sliding our ring finger up to the 9 on the D. Voicing 7 on the A. 10, 9. 10, 7 on the D. Hammer up to the 9. Voice the 7 and hammer back up to the 9 on the D. 7, 10 on the A. 9, 10. Seven on the D. Ten on the A. Hold there. Seven. Slide back up the ten. Back to nine. And hammering the ten. So you can see what I'm doing there is seven. Up to ten. Nine hammer to ten. Back off again. And then I'm voicing 12 with my pinky on the top string. 10 on the top string. 8. 10, 7. All on the top string. Slide the 7 away. Now, you can tell that that note is the same as that note. 12 with my pinky on the top string, you might say, why am I doing that? And I was happily down here on the 7. It's just to do with the fingering and the way that... So if you're going to do it, if you're going to do it uh, differently, you could go. You could use these two fingers, your pinky and your ring finger. That's probably what uh, Glenn and KK are really doing. Those fingers are a bit weaker for me than um, my index and my pinky together, as opposed to these two fingers together. I prefer prefer these two. So I'm just repositioning myself during the. That. So I'm kind of wrapping up, wrapping over to hit that 12. And then just moving down the top string for the rest of the movement, which is. So let's just do that again very, very slowly. first part of of this of this uh, section second part of the section is this delicious part we do that by lining up 9 through 12 on the a string and we're going to start by pulling off 10 to 9 on the a we're then going to go 12 10 12 on the e string palm muted so we're then going to go 12, 10, 12 on the 
go 9, 10, 12 on the A. 9, 10, 12 on the D. 9, 11, 12 on the G. 10, 12 on the B. Diddle, 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 diddle. I'm just going to get this right. Certainly these first few are played the way I think I'm doing it, which is pulling off the 10-9 and then palm using plucking the 12-10-12. And then we've got 9-10-12, 9-10-12 on the D, 9-11-12 on the G, 10-12 on the B. The rest of it is do -do 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 -do, which is triplets rather than semis. So it's which we come down to. We've gone so before we do that. We'll just just do this first section again on the semis. Ten nine and just watch the fingering. So pinky. So all my fingers from nine to twelve are just playing their fret. Whatever fret comes up, if that's the finger, that's the one that plays it. Sorry. 9, 10, 12, 9, 11, 12, but now I switch this and go index finger on the 10 on the B, ring finger on the 12. We then use our third finger to hit the 12 on the G, 13 on the G, 11 on the B, 12 on the B, 13. 11 on the bottom string. So we go into this weird kind of harmonic pattern at the end, which is 12 on the G, 13. 11, 12, 13 on the B. 11, 12 on the E. Do, 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 do. Woo! From the top, I probably, I hope I've confused everybody with this. Each finger plays its own fret. We're starting 10, pulling off to 9 on the A. 12, 10, 12, can't you? 9, 10, 12, 9, 10, 12, 9, 11, 12 on the G. And then index finger tw 10, 12 on the B before using your third finger to come over the top, G, 12, 13, 11, 12, 13, B, 11, 12, E. Whole thing very, very slowly. So from the time we're hitting the G on the 12 on the G with our third finger, we're beginning the triplets. Boo do do boo do do boo. Probably my favourite part of the solo, so it's worth just doing it one more time, very, very slowly. Fast forward this part if you've got it and you don't need me, you don't, don't hear it again. And this reminds me a little bit of actually um, KK's part in uh, Hot for Love when um, we were breaking down Hot for Love about a year or so ago. Uh, and it was a similar sort of thing. It was like he was moving his way up. Anyway, anyway, there's homages uh, all the way through. Actually, I think this whole album, Angel of Retribution, there's homages all the way through. Uh, the guitar solos all the way through the lyrics to, to the previous material. Uh, it's a really, really cool album. Uh, once we get to... You know, you can sing the rest of it. It's... And then... How, what is that? So from the 12, don't lift off. Come down and hit the 8 on the E. So voice it, shake it. It's a really important note. Bang. We're then sliding up. Pick whatever finger you want. It can be your index, probably either your index or your middle finger. Okay. Never, ever lift off. Okay. So what we're going to do is pause the video because uh, a four-year-old is about to come in and bother me. We're back. 
Uh, so. Holding the string down at all times, slide all the way up to 22. Back to 15. 20. 15. 19. Before finally landing on 17. So it's... Boo! Okay. Uh, and that's that entire section. Let's have another quick look at uh, the entire thing. Without, we now have what I think is uh, KK coming in over the top with just a uh, a nice little. I think actually no, it's both of them. Both both guitarists are still uh, working together on this very very slow, almost chill out part at the end of all of that craziness, all of that um, magnificence. We're sliding from the nine on the G. So that's nine down to seven, down to five, and now voice pulling off five, four, down to seven on the D, four on the G, so that's four, seven, five, and then same pattern, five, four on the D, pulling seven on the A, four, seven, five. Slide back up to seven. Then we're ready for the very last movement, which is Glenn coming over the top at the very end with four bars of his patented sweeping uh, at the end to close things out. Uh, so what is that? So we've gone. Glenn comes in and goes. So there's four. The first two are the same as each other. Start with your ring finger on the 14 on the D string, and we're going to go up through the 12s on our index finger for the rest of the strings. Hammering to the 15 with your pinky. And off again. And then come back down again. So it's... Do two of those. We then move to um, the... Put your ring finger now on the 12 on the D. Middle finger goes 13 on the G. And index covers 10 on the bottom two strings. And we do the same pattern... And we're hammering 14 with the pinky this time. Back down again. There's only one of those. We then go hammer 9 to 12 before going back up to... That's 11 on the G and then the two tens. And then finally, ending the entire solo, bending 11 to 12 on the B. Let's have a listen to the whole thing from the 14 from the first swim swept movement. Struggling to play it as you can see. From the 14. I think I didn't even hammer on that time. I think it's... I think it is, though. I think he hammers from 9 to 12 first. Before 
finally. And you know that it's weird. I'm not going to try and simulate Rob Halford. <clears throat> right. So uh, I, hope, I hope that was straight. I hope that was well explained at the very end. I feel like I'm I'm, I'm flagging and not explaining things as clearly as I should. 14, 12, 12, 12. Hammering 15, 12. <laughs> Then 12 on the D, lining up ring finger, 13 on the G, two tenths, 14, before hammering up to 9 from the from 9 to 12 on the D. And then that same pattern again, 13, 10, 10. Sorry, 11, 10, 10. Bending 11 to 12 on the B to finish. got there. That's really hard work. It really takes it out of you. Um, and it's really embarrassing too, then trying to play it slowly and realising that uh, you don't actually know. <laughs> you haven't actually really, really practised the order of the notes at a slower speed and you end up making mistakes. So anyway, hopefully you guys forgive me those uh, on the way. Um, I really hope uh, I've uh, maybe inspired you guys to pick this one up and give it a try. Uh, as always, I'd appreciate any and all uh, feedback, comments. Uh, I will absolutely respond to any questions um, if anyone has any. Um, and I'm willing to keep uh, doing these. They do take a very long time to do. Um, and so I appreciate your patience. Uh, I don't know when the next one will be. Uh, but look, thanks again uh, for watching if you've made it this far, and I will see you again soon. Cheers.